All right. Uh, good day, students. In this part, we're going to be going over um, how to write complex numbers in uh, rectangular and trig forms. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at number 17. Okay. So in question 17, we are to express uh, the number, the complex number in polar form 8 cosine 4 pi over 3 plus i sine four pi over three in a uh, rectangular form, all right? Or if a di form. All right, so in order to do this, we just need to evaluate what cosine four pi over three and sine five, four pi over three are, all right? So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take a look at our table of common tree angles uh, and see what the value of cosine four pi over three and sine five, four pi over three are. So if you look at uh, this sheet that we have, you should have a copy of this. Um, Cosine uh, 4 pi over 3 is negative 1 half right here. And sine 4 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. All right, so we're going to use that. So uh, let's go ahead and put that here. So we're going to have 8 times cosine 4 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. And uh, four, sine 4 pi over 3 is negative uh, root 3 over 2. So it's going to be plus negative root 3 over 2 i. Okay? All right, now we're going to just distribute this 8 to both uh, terms in the parentheses. Distribute 8 to the 1 half, the real part of the complex number, and negative root 3 over 2, the imaginary part. So we're going to have 8, negative 8 over 2, plus times a minus, so the signs are different, you have a minus, minus 8 root 3 over 2 i. All right, simplifying further, 8 over 2 is negative 4, minus 8 over 2 is 4 root 3i. Okay, so this is the rectangular form or a plus bi form of the complex number 8 cosine 4 pi over 3 plus i sine 4 pi over 3. So we can clearly see that our answer is option letter A. All right, let's move on to number 18. Now we have a complex number in rectangular or a plus bi form, and we have to convert it into trigonometric or polar form. So the number under consideration is negative 5 root 3, minus 5i. Okay, so all we need to do, uh, we can look at this as x and y. We need to find r and theta. Okay, so r, using our formula, we know is the square root of x squared plus y squared. All right, so let's apply that. So r is going to be the square root of negative 5 root 3 squared plus uh, that's x squared plus negative 5 squared, that's y squared. Okay, that simplifies into negative 5 squared is 25 times 5, I'm sorry, times 3, plus 25. So that equals the square root of 75 plus 25, which equals the square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10. All right, so we have the radius. Now what we need to find next is the angle theta. All right, so the formula for theta, uh, consulting your formula sheet, you see is tan, the inverse tan of y over x, and you always add pi if x is negative. Is x negative here? Certainly is, so we have to add pi. Since our options are in degrees, the degree equivalent of pi is 180 degrees. All right, so now let's uh, plug in the values of x and y and evaluate what the inverse tangent is. Okay, so we're gonna have the, take the inverse tangent of y which is negative 5 over x, which is negative 5 root 3, that plus 180 degrees. Divide out the 5s, the minus and the minus becomes pluses, so we have the inverse tan of uh, 1 over root 3, but since that is, has a radical on the bottom, we can rationalize the radical, the denominator, root 3 root 3, close that plus 180, so we're going to be taking the inverse tan of root 3 over 3 plus 180. All right, if we take a look at our chart, we'll find out that the inverse tan of root 3 over 3 is, uh, is um, 30 degrees or pi, over, or pi over 6, okay? So um, in this case, it's going to be 30 degrees plus 180 degrees. If you add those two together, you have 210. All right, so we have r and theta, and we know that this, we are writing the trigonometric or polar form of writing the complex number is r cosine theta, 
plus i sine theta. We have cosine and sine theta already, so we're just going to put it in here, okay? So it's going to be 10, because that's what r is, cosine theta, which is 210, plus i sine the same angle, 210. All right, so there goes your answer, and we can clearly see the answer is option letter C. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number 19. Uh, question 19 is very similar to 18. Uh, we are to express this complex number in rectangle A plus BI form in trigonometric or uh, or um, polar form. So we have negative root 3 minus i. So this is the x and this is the y in rectangular form. Now we need to find r and theta again. r is the square root of x squared plus y squared, as indicated in the formula sheet. So that's going to become the square root of negative root 3 square. All right, square uh, plus negative 1 square because the coefficient of i is just 1. So if we square it out, we'll have the square root of 3 plus 1 is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. That goes your radius, okay? And then theta is going to be the inverse tan of y over x. Now, since x is negative, we're going to add pi. I'm using the degree me uh, radian measure because all the angles are radians, okay? So let's go ahead and confuse that. So we're going to do the inverse tan of y, negative 1 over x, root 3, plus pi. All right, now we have to rationalize uh, 1 over root 3. I'm sorry, they're both negative, so let's make that that. So if you rationalize this like the previous problem, you're going to have the inverse tan of root 3 over 3 plus pi. You get that by multiplying by root 3 top and bottom. So that becomes the inverse tan of root 3 is 7 pi. I'm sorry, it's pi over 6. Pi over 6. So uh, we have pi over 6 or 30 degrees. Pi over 6 plus pi. Right, right, right this is pi over 1. And then if we find the LCD here, just multiply it by 6 top and bottom. So pi over 6 is the same thing as 6 pi over 6, right? So if you combine 6 pi over 6 by pi over 6, we're going to have 7 pi over 6 as theta. Okay, so when we combine them together in a rectangular form, our answer is going to be 2 cosine 7 pi over 6 plus i sine 7 pi over 6. And the final answer is option letter D. Okay? All right, let's move on to number 20. All right, so number 20, we're given the uh, two vectors. Uh, we have to find the m minus 2n. So if we uh, compute this in uh, arithmetic form, it should be easy for us to determine what n minus 2n is, okay? So if you take a look at a question, um, m minus 2n, if we count vector m, is given as uh, one unit to the right and then three units down. I'm mean, sorry, three units down, yes, one, two, three. So one comma negative three. And vector n is one unit, to, three units to the right, one, two, three, so that's positive three. And three units down, one, two, three, negative three. All right, so m minus two n, it, we have to, to do m minus two n, we have to double we have to double n, right? So if n is that, then 2n is going to be 2 times 3 comma negative 3. So you distribute the 2 to both of them. So it's going to be 6 comma negative 6. So n minus 2n is going to be uh, 1 comma negative 3 minus 6 comma negative 6. Okay? So we can do the subtraction downwards. And when we subtract, what are we going to get? We we'll get uh, 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Minus 3 minus minus 6 is the same thing as minus 3 plus 6, which is positive 3. Okay? So the vector that's negative 5, 3 will be our answer. If we want to graph negative 5, 3, so if we want to graph negative 5, 3, we just graph our coordinate system. And negative 5, 3 is basically 5 units to the right. So we'll see 1, 2, 
three, four, five, and three units up, one, two, three, okay? All right, so your, our resultant vector is going to look something like this. And there you go. All right, so which vector in our options looks similar to this? Let's take a look at our alter alternatives. I can clearly see vector C, right? Because we go one, two, three, four, five, negative five, and up one, two, three. So the answer is option letter C. Okay? So there you have it. All right, let's take a look at question number 21. Uh, question 21 says, um, it says, given a sequence a n equals 2 minus n plus 5 over n, where n is an integer, uh, or is a, yeah, a real number, a natural number, what is the limit of this sequence as n increases? Okay, so what we're going to do here is basically take the limit as n goes to infinity. So for number 21, we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 minus n plus 5 over n. Okay? Uh, if we take a look at this, this 2 is independent of the limit. This is, so it's going to be 2 minus the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 5 over n. All right? Now, what we're going to do is let's we use the n behavior approach here. So we notice that these were equal weights. So if we divide these two, that basically tells us what the limit is going to be, right? So this reduces to 2 minus the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n, okay? n over n is 1, so we have 2 minus the limit as n approaches infinity of 1, right? So this, is, this number is independent of where n goes, so it's going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So there goes our final answer, all right? So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, you can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. More clips can be found on matplotlib.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.